Hey students, in this video, I'll be touching on the topic of the human respiratory system. We'll be looking at five main guiding questions, namely, what are the components of air? What constitutes the respiratory system? What is the difference between breathing and respiration? How do the respiratory system and circulatory system work together? And finally, how do fishes exchange gases with their surroundings? Before we start, here's a quick joke. Haha! -ha! Comment down below if you understood this joke. And without further ado, let's get started. What are the components of air? As shown in this pie chart, the air contains about 78% nitrogen, about 22% of oxygen, and about 0.03% of carbon dioxide, water vapour, and other gases. Note that it is wrong to think that the air comprises mainly of oxygen gas only. Moving on, what is breathing and what is respiration? How are they different? Well, breathing is the exchange of gases between the air and our bodies. Respiration, on the other hand, is the process by which energy, oxygen is used to break down food to provide us with energy. Breathing and respiration should not be confused. To make it easier for you to remember, notice that in the word breathing, there is breath. So every time you see the word breathing, you are reminded that it is related to your breath. To make things clearer, here are the differences between the processes of breathing and respiration. Breathing involves the nose or mouth, windpipe, lungs, and diaphragm while respiration involves all the living cells of the body. In breathing, oxygen is taken in as part of the air breathed in, while in respiration, oxygen is used to combine with glucose from the digested food to release energy. In breathing, carbon dioxide is given off as part of the air breathed out, while in respiration, carbon dioxide is produced when food is broken down to release energy. So, with the process of breathing at the back of our minds, let's dive right in and find out what constitutes the respiratory system. The respiratory system consists of the nose, the mouth, windpipe, lungs, and the diaphragm which sits below your lungs. The main function of the respiratory system is to supply blood with oxygen in order for the blood to deliver oxygen to all parts of the body. Let's begin with the function of the windpipe. The windpipe is the main air tube connecting the nose to the lungs. It branches into two small air tubes and into the pair of lungs. Like a mini tunnel, the windpipe's primary function is to transport air from your nose or mouth to your lungs. Now, the lungs. The lung contains many tiny air sacs which are surrounded by blood vessels. The lungs transport oxygen from the air you breathe in to your bloodstream. They also transport carbon dioxide from your bloodstream and out of your body through the nose or mouth. It is important to note that the lungs cannot move on their own to take in or force out air. They depend on the muscular system and the skeletal system to do that. For example, the diaphragm, which is a muscle, helps your lungs take in or force out air. And this brings us to our next point, the diaphragm. The diaphragm is a dome-shaped sheet of muscles that moves along with the muscles of the chest wall for you to breathe. Breathing in or out enlarges or narrows the space between the lungs and the chest, causing air to be put into or forced out of the lungs during the process of breathing. Note that, when the diaphragm is, note that the diaphragm is not in your syllabus at this moment, but still, knowing about the works of the diaphragm can help you understand how, better, how breathing works better. So then, how do the circulatory and respiratory systems work together? Follow me closely as I explain this flowchart. When we inhale, air enters through our nose or mouth. In the nose, the air is filtered, warmed and moistened, ready for the lungs. 
this transported to the lungs through the windpipe. Do note the, that the air breathed in does not only contain oxygen. Let's recap the components of air. Air contains nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide and other gases at different proportions. It is only mainly oxygen that is useful for our body in respiration to produce energy. Next, the air in the lungs travels to, into the blood vessels which surround the air sacs. Then, the blood vessels transport the air containing oxygen and carbon dioxide as well as other gases to the heart which pumps the oxygenated blood to the rest of the body. Notice that we call the blood transported here oxygenated. This is because it contains a much larger amount of oxygen than carbon dioxide. It is also useful to remember that oxygen is carried by the blood in small cells called red blood cells. And next, cells at different parts of the body use the oxygen carried in the red blood cells to supply the body part with energy through the process of respiration and give out carbon dioxide which is carried by the blood vessels. The deoxygenated blood in the blood vessels is carried back to the heart. Finally, the heart pumps the deoxygenated blood back to the lungs where the lungs exhale the carbon dioxide rich air out of the body. Note that the exhaled air contains mo mostly carbon dioxide, sorry, but that does not mean that nitrogen, oxygen and other smaller amounts of gases are absent. Some oxygen could still be present in the exhaled air, while nitrogen and other gases would be not be used by the body and hence the amount would be the same. This is an important concept to know. Now that we know how the respiratory system works for humans, what about fishes? Since oxygen is needed for all living things for survival, then how do fishes breathe underwater? Firstly, a fish breathes by taking in water containing dissolved oxygen into the mouth. This water is passed through the gills which contain many blood vessels. When the water is passed through the gill cover of the gills, dissolved oxygen is taken into the blood vessels and passed to all parts of the body of the fish. Water containing carbon dioxide is passed from the, out of the fish's body from under the gill cover. Here is a summary of the fish's respiratory system. Pause the video to check out if you have understood how fishes breathe underwater. Note that in your syllabus, the details in this picture are not required. Let's take a look at the differences between respiratory systems of humans and fishes. Humans breathe in air while fishes take in water. Air passes into the lungs of humans while air passes into the gills of fishes. Oxygen is taken in by humans while dissolved oxygen is taken in by fishes. Finally, carbon dioxide is removed from the human body through the mouth, the mouth or nose, while in fishes, carbon dioxide leaves through the gill cover. Can you name more similarities and differences between the respiratory system of humans and fishes? And with that, let's recap the four main concepts we have learned. The main concept, components of air are nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide and other smaller amounts of gases. The respiratory system is made up of the nose, mouth, windpipe, lungs and diaphragm. It is linked to the, respiratory, the circulatory system via blood vessels. Breathing involves the exchange of gases between our body and the surroundings while respiration involves energy production by all living cells. And finally, fishes take in dissolved ox carbon sorry, fishes take in dissolved oxygen and give out carbon dioxide by taking in water through the mouth. And now it's time for a short quiz. Pause the video to attempt the following question on your own. When you are done, continue with the video. For part A, nitrogen is gas B, oxygen is gas C, 
and carbon dioxide is gas A. Nitrogen is not used by the body for any processes. Thus, the amount of nitrogen in inhaled air and exhaled air stays the same. This is a very important concept, as mentioned earlier. In inhaled air, oxygen is at 22%, while carbon dioxide is at about 0.03%. Recall the components of air. In exhaled air, however, most oxygen is taken into blood the sorry is taken into the body cells for respiration to generate energy. In the process, more carbon dioxide is produced. Thus, there will be a decrease in the amount of oxygen in inhaled versus exhaled air, while an increase in the amount of carbon dioxide in inhaled versus exhaled air. For part B, tube S con will contain the highest increase of carbon dioxide after 6 hours. Tube S is covered by a black box, which prevents the hydrilla from photosynthesizing. Thus, in the dark, only respiration can occur for both hydrilla and water snails. Hence, the hydrilla and the water snails will produce more carbon dioxide. In tube P, there are only water snails that respire and breathe out carbon dioxide. In tube Q, because the hydrilla is exposed to light, the leaves can photosynthesize. Recall that photosynthesis involves taking in carbon dioxide and giving out oxygen. So, very obviously, the amount of carbon dioxide in Q will drop. Note that while it is conducting photosynthesis, respiration is also happening but at a slower rate. Thus, the amount of carbon dioxide produced through respiration is much less than the amount of carbon dioxide taken in for photosynthesis. So, there will be an over overall drop in carbon dioxide amounts nonetheless. In tube R, although there are now two living species in the tube that can respire, photosynthesis is still taking place by the hydrilla. Thus, the amount of carbon dioxide in tube R will definitely be less as compared to tube S, which contains hydrilla that can only respire since there is no light for photosynthesis to occur. Did you get them right? And that's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. Before we end off, we would like to thank Gabriel for his tremendous guidance in the production of this video, as well as Koh Young and Well and Care Center for providing us with the, this opportunity to help you. See you in our next video. Have fun learning! This video is brought to you by Project Love of Learning by students from Hua Chong Institution.